Hi, this is Aaron from Sibling Rivalry, and today we're going to be making a spicy greyhound cocktail using hot peppers that we've grown in our own apartment. A martini, shaken, not stirred. So this is actually how we grew the hot peppers in our apartment. We're using a, a hydroponic system called the click and grow. And the way that it works, it actually has these little capsules that have a peat pod inside of them that has a special formulation of nutrients and whatnot that the plant needs. And you can buy these pods that have either the seeds pre-planted or you can get an, what they call an experimental pod that allows you to plant whatever seeds you choose. The model here is actually the Click and Grow 9, which is an improved version over this one, which is the Click and Grow 3. The improvement here is these red spectrum LEDs that you see right there. So what the red spectrum LEDs do is they actually boost the initial growth of these plants. So red light tends to penetrate soil a little better than white light does and so the white light is actually a full spectrum light uh, for example with that these peppers right here have actually been planted in the last three to four weeks and they're already forming the plants are actually forming peppers on there like you can see whereas this click and grow the three the plants in here are they've been there for quite a while this one actually was planted the same time as these, so you get a great side-by-side -side there. This one was planted about seven months ago, and it's just starting to have mature peppers forming on it. And this one was planted, I believe, about three months ago, and it's just starting to flower now. It's actually not looking that great, to be honest. It works fine, but obviously the Click and Grow 9 with the improved lights is a much better option. So I'm actually gonna be harvesting peppers from here, primarily. What we're trying to do today is actually just to test out the potency of these peppers to see how spicy they actually are. I don't have any way of getting a formal Scoville rating, but I should be able to get a good idea from this beverage. Uh, so I'm actually using some edge cutters here you can use sharp scissors or you can use specialty pruners but as long as you have a sharp cutting edge it should leave the plant in a perfectly fine state for you to continue growing more peppers or whatever fruit you're growing so I'll just clip some of these off and we're just going for the ones that are fully red there's some that are purple which i've noticed with this click and grow that they actually grow in purple initially and I think that's due to the different wavelengths of light. So I'm gonna get the larger ones here and I'll probably grab some other peppers off camera, but you can see up close there, that's one of the peppers. Now that I've harvested the hot peppers, which are actually chili peppers, let me just clarify that, I'm going to prepare them and put them in this mixture that we have here. So this cocktail actually calls for a spicy simple syrup and the way that you make a simple syrup is you have a concentrated sugar water mixture that you reduce down. So it makes a syrupy syrup. So in this case, because we're doing a flavored simple syrup, we're gonna add the hot peppers to that. And we're actually gonna go to the kitchen in a sec and show this all being mixed up. So now I'm gonna start cutting up the peppers, cleaning them and putting them in here. Yeah, and these are very seedy. You can see that in there. So we're going to go. It says to slice them into little halves. There's a lot of seeds in there, so hopefully this turns out pretty good. A lot of times the uh, with hot peppers, it's actually the connective tissue between the seeds and the stem that have the capiscasin in it, which is the chemical that makes peppers spicy. So 
If there's a lot of seeds, usually that means there's a lot of seed, like a lot of that connective tissue. So, yeah. We're just gonna leave the stems because, yeah, you don't really need the stems. Let's do this. And we'll probably filter this out and get the seeds out of it, but the seeds actually never hurt anyone. So if you eat the seeds, it's not gonna kill you. But if you're following along at home, definitely don't touch your eyes at any point here or any mucous membrane on your body is, it'll just be bad. Put that there. So these peppers might have actually, might've been better if we had have harvested them sooner because they are kind of dried out a little bit. There's less meat in there, but for what we're going for today, it doesn't really, doesn't really matter too much. We're just reducing this down to get the heat out of them. So we're actually gonna try this one this way. Ooh, it's got a lot of spice to it. Just took a bit of a sniff there and it's got that nice zing, like a jalapeno pepper does when you make poppers or anything like that. So I'm thoroughly impressed. It's always cool to see the sort of things you can grow in these click and grow gardens. All right, I'm gonna try and pick up the rest of these seeds, get them in there, and we'll meet back up with you in the kitchen. All right, so we've set the heat to a medium high temperature. And I'm actually just gonna use a fork here to mix this as it goes, and we're gonna let this reduce. So let's kind of mix. Now, ideally you'd use a saucepan, but I didn't have a saucepan on hand. So, yeah. Anything, any uh, vessel is fine to use as long as it's safe for this sort of stuff. Yeah, so with this, you want to keep going until the sugar completely dissolves into it. And then just let it reduce a little bit. So essentially, with any simple syrup, you could really, you could get into the nitty gritty and do some science and get an exact point and everything. But like anything with cooking or mixology, you can always just kind of go by ear. And while that really didn't work in the last video, it's a completely different thing when it comes to food. It's entirely preferential. So you could reduce it down to like a really thick, simple syrup if you really want that. But the thing to keep in mind is if you do that, it will be harder to mix with the rest of the cocktail. So you wanna get everything reduced, do this for a few minutes. So that looks like it's about done and we're gonna take this off and let it cool for a bit and we'll be back in a sec 20 minutes later all right so we're back from the kitchen so we're a bit of a minimalist family so we didn't have a sieve on hand for filtering out the chunks of the simple syrup so we're actually gonna use a French press that we had it just didn't make sense for us to go out and buy a sieve when we have things on hand that do the same job. So I'm actually just going to be putting a small amount of this simple syrup into the cocktail and all of our ingredients are going to be going into here. So here we go. And being extra careful after the last video. Don't need to pour 
this on the table because it'll make even more of a mess. And of course he says that and his hands start shaking. <laughs> so there we go, that's in there. So that's one ounce of the simple syrup. I'm gonna scoop that off screen. We've got some ice cubes here. I'm gonna drop those in. You can really do this in any order. I'm sure that professional mixologists will have some particular way of doing things. Everyone has their own way of doing stuff. Uh, so normally this recipe calls for a grapefruit juice. We didn't have any on hand. Like I said, we're kind of minimalists. We had some concentrated grapefruit juice though. It's like a syrup that's meant for soda stream. So what I'm gonna be doing is mixing it with a bit of water here, and then we're gonna add that into the cocktail just so it doesn't come out too strong and it kind of has the same effect as grapefruit juice. So let's add a little bit in there. And that should be good. It looks like it's a good color. I'll just take a sniff. Yeah, smells like grapefruit. I'll grab this stirring spoon and just mix this up a little bit. Just make sure that we've got an even mixture in here. And set that off to the side. And we'll pour that in. Now, some people will actually use the strainer component on the cocktail shaker to aerate whatever you're putting in there, but I don't really think that makes any sense. You're gonna be aerating it by shaking it. So now we're gonna add in, I'm gonna do two ounces of vodka. Please sponsor us, Polar Ice. Hashtag not sponsored. So let's go here. There we go, there's one ounce. And I really have no preference over vodka. It's just what was on hand. Neither of us really drinks. So it's more for when we have company. There we go. All right, that's starting to smell really good. All right, so set that off camera like this and away we go and the cool thing about these shakers is the act of shaking the alcohol with the ice causes it to super chill so it can actually get really freaking cold I've actually seen it get below freezing sometimes because of the way that it's super chills. All right, so that's like super cold. You might be able to actually see some of the condensation forming on there. It's actually a bit of a warm day for October. So it's surprising. Um, ooh, there we go. And we'll just pour some in here. Let's see what it looks like. Now with a bit of a pinkish yellowish hue. And that's the, uh, the condensed syrup with the capiscase in it, as well as the grapefruit that's in there. So, juice. Let's have a quick sip. Dang. <laughs> that's actually really good. It's got like a sweet, spicy, and sour flavor to it. It's got a bit of a burn, so if you have acid reflux, definitely make sure you've taken your antacids. But honestly, I'd recommend this. The recipe normally calls for using a salt rim. I'm not personally a fan of that. Uh, so when you use a salt rim, it's technically a different drink. But in this case, uh, this is the Spicy Greyhound. 7 out of 10, perfect score. So thanks again for watching. Uh, I hope you liked the video and had some fun making this with us. And like and subscribe and make sure to ring the bell 
so you get notifications because apparently that's what we have to do. And we're going to put a link to the recipe down in the bio and it's actually going to have some more details on how this recipe works and it'll have a bit more ins and outs. It's not a recipe that we came up with, but yeah. Uh, if you ever thought that spicy stuff and alcohol and sweet stuff didn't go together, this is the counterpoint to that argument. Again, thanks for watching and have a great day.